types of house soiling are one of the commonest reasons for cats to be relinquished to cats protection branches and shelters. It's also a very common reason for owners to bring their cats to see behaviour specialists. House soiling, however, is not a simple problem. To start with, for example, there are lots of different types of house soiling. Cats may soil the house because they are eliminating or going to the toilet, or they may be soiling the house because they are leaving scent marks around their environment. To get to the bottom of these kinds of problems, therefore, we need to get lots of background information. We need to have information about the cat itself and its history. We need to have information about the environment and we also need to have some information about the problem itself and how it's developed over time. To do this, we need to think about things from the cat's perspective. And two cat owners have kindly agreed to help us out today so that we can do that. Thomas's problem is that he soils inside the house. Before we can decide what's causing this, we have to know what he's doing. House soiling can mean inappropriate urination, defecation or urine spraying. Okay, Jane, it's really useful for us to know uh, whereabouts the cats have been spraying so that we can get some idea about why they might have been doing it. Okay. okay. So what I've got you to do here is a plan of your house, which is fantastic. Uh, and what we now need to do is to get you to mark on it where the cats have sprayed. Okay, it was in the kitchen yep. at two electrical points okay. above the worktop. Uh -huh. and, and where about next, next? Did it stay in the kitchen? Or? It stayed in the kitchen for quite a long time and then it started moving around the rest of the house going into the front bedroom first. Okay. And they would I'd noticed they'd sprayed on the pillows, right. which would be here. Okay. Um obviously because there was staining on the pillows. Okay. And it was the same little tiny marks, was yeah, it? Yeah, the same yeah. sort of circle of marks, yes. Okay. Um that gradually moved on to the remainder of the house. And then they started doing it in the hall at the front door here. Right. And on two bedside tables here and here. At the wall here where the doorway is and anywhere else they that takes their fancy really I can see this is going to this is quite a problem for you I can see why you're at your wits end yes um, now obviously as we talked before cats always spray in particular places for a reason okay mm -hmm. they're leaving a message about that part of their territory for other members of their social group and other cats and yeah. also themselves so all of these places where the cats are spraying mean that they're not happy in those locations now what we can see from a lot of these places that a lot of these associated with entrance and exit points mm -hmm. um, for either in and out through the bedroom window and also electrical points things that um, are in the kitchen here, also the TV and the DVD player and your computer as well. Mm. Then the important thing about electrical things is that they heat up. Yeah. And when they heat up, they change the kind of scent profile of the room. Right. And that's what attracts cats to them in the first place. When they're stressed, they tend yeah. to look for electrical equipment. But they also learn that when they spray on them, when the, when these items uh, heat up, it disperses the scent very effectively <laughs> through the room. So, does, yeah. so it's, it's good for them, not so good for you. And I think these marks here uh, are, around here are all entrance and exit points uh, where they are having to go past each other mm. all of the time. Does that make sense? So they're, they're in areas where they're more likely to be in conflict with each other. So I think what we have to be looking at is... Um, dealing with the conflict between the two cats because I think that's the, the, big that cause the, of the big cause of the problem and I think it's also been exacerbated by the fact that there are cats outside um, so we can where the cats are actually seeing outside of the house um, they're also there's an additional threat of the cats outside both to the front and the back but mainly to the front that's why we're getting spray marking around this area because mm. it's um, it's where the cats can see out into the into the back garden right in order to deal with Thomas's problems, we need to approach this in two different ways. We need to deal with Thomas's conflict with Pippin and prevent Thomas going back and remarking where he has sprayed before. In order to do the former, we need to make sure that both Thomas and Pippin can access all the things that they need without necessarily having to go past each other. We can also create more entrance and exit points from the house by opening windows or putting in extra cat flaps, for example, so that the cats can each get in and out of the house without having to go past each other. We also need to stop Thomas going back and topping up his scent marks by using an appropriate cleaning regime and also using some cat scent therapy. The cleaning regime involves a 10% solution of biological washing powder. This contains enzymes which will break down the fatty acids in the scent mark so that Thomas will no longer be able to smell where he has sprayed. 
I've also asked Jane to do some extra things with the cats like playing with them or giving them some puzzle feeders. This gives both the cats something different to do so they're not patrolling around worrying about what's in their environment and are thinking about doing different things within the house. In the meanwhile we've got another case to see. I've come down to Devon to see a second cat with a house soiling problem. This is Willow and she's a beautiful nine-year-old apricot Persian. This is such a fantastic garden, Maureen. You work really hard. I bet the cats love it too, don't they? Oh, they do, but they are home-loving cats too, so um, they, uh -huh. they spend time out here, but they, they're glad to come in. I understand you've got a cat with a problem. Yes, we took on Willow as a rescue cat about four or five years ago, and she was absolutely fine for the first couple of years. Um, but then she started um, urinating around the place in two specific spots, which uh -huh. obviously is not a very social sort of no. habit to have. No. Shall we go and have a look at the places where she's, um, she's urinating? That would seem to be a very good okay. idea. This is the kitchen, Rachel, uh -huh. uh, an area where the cats have free range at overnight. Right, OK. And this is the area where Willow performs. Or oh, one right. of the areas where Willow performs. Okay. Now, is it a large puddle or is it just a tiny little bit? A very large puddle. So it's yeah, a full, she's been saving it up. It's a full yes, urination. Absolutely. Um, and is it down on the floor or, or do you see it on the wall at all? No, it's just down on the floor. She doesn't spray at all. Right. It's just in there, that area. All and it's hidden here. right in the corner That's there. That's right, yeah. Oh, okay. Is there, you said there's another spot as well? Yes, there yep. is. I'll show you. This is one of our living rooms and this of course is more of a problem because it's got carpet on the floor. Oh yes, I can see. I can smell something already. Yes, I'm afraid you can. This is the area oh, that here, she favours up this corner here. Okay, so and right uh, right in the corner. Right in the corner. Yes. And it's the same, is it a big puddle again? It's a great big puddle and we're wanting to replace the carpet in here but of course we can't do it while we've got this problem. Sure, makes sense. Okay, what I think we need to do is to sit down um, and go through some of the details of this problem so we can work out what to do. So remember that cats that are urinating, like Willow, will crouch low and produce a large volume of liquid on a horizontal surface. When cats urinate, they will seek a private hidden location, such as in a corner. In contrast, where cats are urine spraying, like Thomas and Pippin were, they will produce a small volume of urine. This is squirted out backwards onto a vertical surface. Urine spray tends to occur in an obvious exposed location because its function is to leave an easily identified message. Spraying cats have a characteristic posture with their tails in the air, often quivering with their feet padding. Right, so that's the place that we've just had a look at, where she pees in the corner, and that's the corner in the kitchen, is that right? Yes. And this is the cat flap where they come in and out of the conservatory. Mm -hmm. You've got a couple of litter boxes here, uh, and this is where the food bowls are. Well, that's quite right. Okay, that's good. Um, the whole reason for doing this plan is to help us to work out things from her perspective, because these, these are all the things that are important to her, going in and out where the litter box is and where her food is. Okay. Um, now, there's lots of different reasons why cats will change their elimination behaviour, but they don't change it for no reason at all. There's always a good reason. So just like a human, they would always go to the toilet in the same location if there's no good reason for them to change. Okay. So we have to think about two years ago, there's something that has changed in her world, which has meant that she's no longer going either outside or into the litter box to toilet, and now she's toileting up this end. Okay. Now one of the reasons why a cat might change where it goes to the toilet is the fact that it doesn't recognise the litter material as a toilet anymore. So for example, if you change your litter material, can you remember if you've changed the litter at all? Well, we did change the litter. We tried several different sorts in case she just didn't like the original cat litter, but we've now gone back to the original because it didn't make any difference at all. Or the other thing could be that the litter boxes have actually moved to a location that's no longer acceptable to it. It could be in a corridor that's really busy or something. So have you have you moved the litter boxes? No, they've been there right from the beginning. Right, okay, so none of those things are, are relevant no. to the problem with Willow. Now the other big reason for cats to change their elimination behaviour is if they've got medical problems. Now has Willow been to see your vet? Yes, a month ago they had their um, annual 
uh, MOT and okay. she was checked out completely then and he can't find anything wrong with her at all. That's great. Um, so that's fantastic that Willow's okay, but for a lot of cats, medical problems can be significant. Cats can actually get cystitis, just like humans can. Um, and when they go to the toilet, it stings where, when, when they pass the urine. And sometimes they can associate that pain with where they are rather than it being the cystitis. Um, and that will cause them to change their location to somewhere different. There's also a range of other medical problems that can actually make a cat drink more. So things like uh, kidney disease or hypothyroidism and lots of other diseases can actually make a cat take more water in. And as you know yourself, if you drink more, you need to, to pee more as well. Um, so any cat that has, for example, kidney disease or hypothyroidism or anything like that that increases their thirst or can also have an impact on, on where they urinate. So what we need to do is to think about why she's no longer accessing those litter boxes. And that is the other big reason why cats change their behaviour. It's because they can't actually get to the places where the litter boxes are. And I think, in Willow's case, that's actually what's going on. Now, we know that she can access it sometimes and she can go outside sometimes. But on other occasions, she apparently can't get to those and, and, and urinates in these other places. And I would suggest the reason for that is because she's a little bit intimidated by one or two of your other cats, mainly the young cat that arrived around about two and a half years ago, the new kitten that you mm -hmm. got, because she's quite a confident cat, isn't she? And she tends to sit around this area. Um, and I think that would be a good reason for Willow not wanting to actually come up and use the litter box. So when we're thinking about treatment, what we're going to have to do is to do two things. One is to try and stop her urinating in these locations, but also we're going to have to try and give her somewhere that she can go to the toilet without having to go past um, the friends that she's a bit wary of. So this is Willow's new litter tray, Rachel. Where would you like me to put it? I think right in the corner, mm -hmm. that's okay because she spends most of her time upstairs and that's where she's happiest. When she wants to go to the toilet, she comes downstairs and if she can't get through into the kitchen or conservatory because of the other cats there, she always comes in here. And this is, she's got this established as a toilet already. So she's telling you this is where she wants to have her litter mm -hmm. tray, really. So I think that's the ideal spot, if you're happy with that. That's fine. Good, okay. Now the other thing we need to do is to clean up the areas where she has toileted because where it smells of urine, it's going to attract her back to those locations. Mm -hmm. Now in here, you're taking the carpet up anyway, aren't you? Yes, we are. So that's the ideal time. If we can just take this section of carpet right out with the carpet and the underlay where it's soaked through and clean the floor underneath with a biological agent, um, that will get rid of the smell in the carpet through here entirely and we can get her established on the litter tray. Mm -hmm. And the same applies in the kitchen. Um, just clean that up very thoroughly with a biological agent and that will stop her going back to that location. Okay. Fine. Thanks very much for your time today. It's been really nice talking to you and talking to and seeing Willow as well. Uh, it's been a great day, so hopefully it's been useful for you. I'm very grateful to you. Thank you very much for all your advice. That's no problem at all. So we will be back to see Maureen and see how Willow is getting on in a couple of weeks. And I'm really optimistic that with a new litter tray, things will really have improved. Back with Thomas. Thomas and Pippin are much happier and so is Jane. The spraying hasn't stopped completely but it is much better and we're on our way to a happier family. Do remember though that many different changes in the environment can cause a cat to spray so not every cat needs the same treatment as Thomas. But for Thomas things are really looking up. When we caught up with Maureen and Willow I was delighted to find that Willow was using her new tray and there were no more puddles in the house. Remember that house soiling problems in cats are never simple. In order to sort these problems out, we first need to look at why cats have changed their behaviour before we can start to treat them. The aim of this video has been to help you to understand why cats change their behaviour, not to turn you into instant cat behaviourists. So do remember that where a simple intervention is not successful, do ask for professional help. Many of these problems are very easily sorted. Mm -hmm.